So in this video, we will be going over inductors, which again, you hopefully remember something about inductors from physics. If you do, this can serve as a review. So inductors store energy in a magnetic field. The units of inductance are measured in Henry's, where one abbreviated H, where one Henry is equal to one volt second per amp. And again, you may remember from physics that physically an inductor is a coil of wire with a magnetic field. So you have, if you look at the cross section here, you have the wires going into and out of the page and each one, if you follow the right hand rule, has an individual magnetic field around it. So when you coil wire up like this, all of those magnetic fields add up and you wind up with a much stronger magnetic field, which is how you make an electromagnet. But again, in a circuits class, we don't really care about that. We're not calculating the inductance based on the number of turns or the length of the wire or anything. We are just given an inductor and its inductance is measured in Henry's. The circuit symbol for an inductor looks just like the physical thing. So it is drawn as a coil of wire. Sometimes you will see it drawn like this with little half circles instead of the complete loops, but they mean the same thing. The equation for an inductor looks kind of similar to the one we had for capacitor. It's V equals L di dt, or in integral form, I of t. I of t equals 1 over L integral t naught t v of t prime dt prime plus i naught. And again, these equations can tell us some useful things about the behavior of an inductor, both in steady state and in terms of continuity, or what values can and can't change instantaneously over an inductor. First in steady state. So as we did with a capacitor, look at what happens as the derivatives stop changing. So as t approaches infinity, we assume our derivatives are all going to zero. If di dt goes to zero, then that means v also goes to zero. In steady state, an inductor behaves like a short circuit. So if I have an inductor that's connected to some other stuff in my circuit, I don't care what else it's connected to in steady state, it's just acting like a wire, okay? So the voltage drop over that is going to be zero. The current through it is not necessarily zero. That depends on what else it's connected to. So, but again, we know that this is just a wire. There's no resistance to it, so it can't have any voltage drop across it. So in steady state, an inductor behaves like a short circuit in contrast to a capacitor, which behaves like an open circuit in steady state. And we can do, just like we did for the capacitor, we can analyze the continuity. So if I had a graph of current versus time, and I said I wanted to have a jump in current, so I have a point where my di dt equals infinity, well then from my inductor equation, that means my voltage is going to equal infinity. So again, from V equals IV, that means I would require infinite power in order to have that instantaneous jump in current through an inductor. So for an inductor, the current must be continuous. Okay, the slope of the current does not have to be continuous. Okay, so again, I can have a triangle wave of current, but I can't have any jumps in the current. And I can have jumps in voltage. So jumps in voltage are okay. I can do this. I can have an instantaneous change in voltage over an inductor. But since the derivative in my equation is di dt, that's the one where I can't have an instantaneous change or else I wind up with infinite voltage. Not the other way around. A instantaneous change in voltage does not give me an infinite current.